In the last video, we embarked on the thousand mile journey to attend our annual family vacation in Mammoth Lakes, California. However, this isn't a run of the mill vacation for us, but is special for a few reasons. One, this was our first big trip with Jesse having his private pilot's license. Two, this was our first big trip in the air as a family of three. And three, we haven't attended the big family vacation for over five years because we were busy trying to change our lives. In 2015, we embarked on a journey of becoming self-employed, becoming debt-free, buying bare land in the country, and building a home with our own hands with no prior experience, knowing that if we could pull it off, it could change our lives forever. At first, we were more in prison than ever, having debt and a property we couldn't leave. We never gave up, even with very few breaks. It was all worth it because we now have the freedom from debt and we can step away from the property without guilt. Since last time I was here, they've added this whole okay, pulley no, thing. Okay. Holy cow, when you're I right. Was here, way back when I was a kid, all there was was a rock wall, and there's actually this big zip line thing right here. It was so fun. Holy cow. And we would just beg and beg and beg my parents to let us go on it, and finally yeah. they did. Here's the million dollar question uh -huh. Is it gondola or gondola? Yep. So I guess we're doing this. We can't go back now. Yep. Details. Mammoth is my McCall. Yep. So what's funny is all the memories I have here, you have a McCall. Right. So it's the same memories, it's just a different mountain. It's a different mountain, different town. Nothing on the house. Oh yeah, this Smoke is my deal. way of not being bored. Way to give back. Oh yeah. Pay it forward. So five years ago, we were standing atop the same mountain after having had this conversation about what we wanted our life to look like, and we were just so far from it. We were so far from the dream, but we had a dream. So it's crazy. An idea that's kind of been in our head lately is that you underestimate, no, you overestimate what you could do in a year, but you underestimate what you can do in five years. And five years ago, if you would tell us where we'd be today, standing on top of this very same mountain and how different our life would be like, I don't think I'd believe you. No, not a way, no way. I think we had this dream and we were putting it in motion. We were searching for land. We were camping oh, in our car. Right. And we had been working really hard to try to switch our income from being location dependent to location agnostic. It was very scary. 
and it didn't work at first. We failed a whole bunch. And uh, happily, when we were here f about five years ago, we actually were able to make money while being here on the internet. And it was like a new concept for us. It wasn't much, but while we were yeah. here eating our breakfast and you yeah. know, on the way here, we were sleeping in our hammock, it, we proved it could be done. Yeah, don't, don't, don't misinterpret that to say that we we're making a lot of money. You couldn't live on what we were making, but the point is we had an income and we knew it was possible, but we would, we would start and stop and fail and, and do a bunch of things. And if this is the first video on your channel, our channel that you're watching, you've missed the entire adventure and this video won't mean much to you. You'd have to go back and watch all the crazy, crazy stuff that we've been through. But here we are standing here and we, five years ago, we're, we are pretty much where we, where, where we wanted to be, but we, we never would have believed we could have achieved it. It's not rare on our channel to receive a lot of criticism for how slowly some of the projects that we do uh, progress, but that's really why we want to share this type of a message because we feel like it's too easy for people who are looking in from the outside to judge you based on what you've been able to achieve in the last year or six months or two years. But you know what, if you turn that mirror around and make it look at them and ask them what they've achieved in the same amount of time, it's really surprising how little people accomplish in a year unless they really put their mind to it. And Alyssa and I have literally not stopped working since we started on this journey. I think two years ago, we took two days off in a year. That's not something we're proud of. It's not a trophy, but it's just what it takes to do what we've done. And we set our minds to something and we agreed we wouldn't stop until we reached certain milestones. But guess what? Along the way, life happens. So if, you, if you're too rigid, you're gonna fail because you prioritize wrong and so we've had to be a little bit like lenient with ourselves which is not easy because we're goal driven hard at it go 100 miles a minute type of people and one of the reasons we're excited to share this message today is that we finally have given ourselves permission to take just a little bit of time to enjoy family to kind of revisit some memories and it's somewhat for a check-in for us the whole reason we're sharing this is not to brag we're not trying to like make ourselves sound really important we're just trying to encourage people to try and start and don't don't hesitate to just work yourself into the grave for a little while for a little while it's amazing what you can accomplish and guess what we're going to be doing this for the next many many years and we're okay with that but we've achieved fundamentally what we set out to achieve which is to be debt free to be able to spend time working as a family on our property and that's exactly what we're doing i think it's really hard to communicate that we have never in one year achieved what we said we were going to do we've never done it what we said we were going to be where we were going to be in one year we've always missed the mark but in five years we've done way more than we thought we could possibly yeah. do i think so many people they don't set goals because they're afraid of failure. True. And that's very natural. Like failure sucks. It's, it's not embarrassing. Fun. But think about like, I don't know, everyone's familiar with weight loss, right? You say like, I want to lose 20 pounds, but if you only lose 10, is that okay? You know, rather yep. than not trying and not losing any, it's a really poor example, but yep. yeah, set a goal, aim for the moon. And if you fall among the stars, like, well, that's not a bad thing. That's where we're at. So and just, what we've learned is that you don't, we ha everybody has this vision for what they're gonna achieve. I'm gonna have this beautiful home and a beautiful property and a beautiful garden and a beautiful family and a beautiful job. You don't do that. You go one step at a time. You start with something and you complete it. You yeah. start with something and you complete it. And over time, your life I think transforms. another way to say this is something that's inspired me before is my goal is to be further, to, further tomorrow than I am today. Yep. And that's it. One step further is further. Yeah, and if you but don't if you, start- if you never take that step, you're always, 10 years is gonna go by and you're gonna be standing in the exact same spot. Like yep. there's a lot of people that say, I wish I was doing what you were doing 10 years ago, 20 years ago. And here I am, I'm like 50, 60 years old. Yep. And I mean, that's no judgment at all. Yep. And again, it's not a feather in our hat. It's just kind of sharing our experience that when you put one foot in front of the other, amazing things can happen in a seemingly short amount of time when you look back on it, but day to day, it's really not that special. No. And for us, day to day is more discouraging than anything. Yes. We feel like we don't achieve anything. So that's why coming to a place like this, you know, your place might be a mountain, it might be a trip, it might be a coffee shop. It's like, last time I was here, what's happened? We also keep, we used to keep a to-done list. Yep. It's so easy to focus on the to-do list and for everything you mark off, you add 10 items. The to-done list is equally as important because it's like, 
sometimes you're like, what did I do this month? But when you look at your to-done list, it's like, oh, here's what I did. It's no wonder these goals didn't happen because all these things were part of this. Yep. And all these things had to happen to achieve this. Yep. So that's why check-ins are so important. And you have to set goals, even if you miss the goals, but you make it halfway there, you made it halfway towards your goal and that's halfway further than you were when you started. Mm -hmm. But if you're too rigid and you say, well, I'm afraid of not reaching my goal, great. Then you can stay right where you're at and you can be in misery and you can watch everybody else live out their dreams. So mm -hmm. why not start and start small? Where we started was not pretty. You can start small and, and it's not gonna be pretty too, but you could be standing on a mountain looking back in five years thinking, wow, look how far yeah. we've come. We do wanna say one thing about trying to achieve something. The second you start anything that is substantial, expect people to criticize you. It's going to happen and they're gonna do it from their lawn chair. And those critics will still be sitting in that lawn chair criticizing you five years from now when you're living your dream. And so take some pleasure, or some joy in knowing what you have accomplished, even if it's not what you wanted to accomplish, and they mock you because you don't achieve your goals, don't worry, you're way farther in life than they'll ever be because they'll still be sitting in that lawn chair five, 10, 25 years from now and you'll have achieved most of your goals and there's a lot of pleasure in knowing that you've worked really hard and they're all still out there watching you achieve your goals. Oh my goodness. You have to be kidding me right now. Wait till Jesse sees this. Okay, I want to get your real-time reaction. Ready? Okay. Yeah, I haven't looked at it yet. Okay, now look at that sign. <laughs> you can't, you can't script this stuff. Nice! Turns out, you know, it's so funny. this is a positive video, but is it a cliff with just like a hand? Oh my god, it's totally pointing to the cliff. It is. It's oh, a, wait, let's not even go there. The to done list is such a gem. If you don't have one and you're kind of going on a journey, whatever your journey is, every week or whatever, every day, sit down and write down what you got done that day. And at the end of a month, look back at what you achieved in a month. Even if your to-do list still have, has a bunch of stuff on it and you're frustrated because you're like, man, I should be able to get that done. Look at the to-done list and it'll shock you if you put your mind to it how much you actually get done. And it gives you some comfort knowing that you haven't had a day or a moment or a minute or even an hour to just do nothing. Five years later, where do you think we'll be in five more years? I don't know. I, I think I haven't, I haven't really planned the next five years of Me our either. life because we've been so busy trying to get yep. here that I don't, I don't really know. It's good to be busy. I think it, it's good on the mind, but it's also good to take breaks. I think it's time to set some new goals. That's what I think. I think we're going to have to sit down and look at the next five years and figure out what the heck's going to happen. And then in five years, we'll come back here and laugh about how little of it we actually achieved and how much of it we did. Yeah, sounds about right. So I guess we'll have to live the next five years to find out. Wow. Didn't feel this bed coming up. It's you and me, buddy. I'm not sure if I'm embarrassed or proud if I can rope you. So which one are you going to try to rope? This one. is this <laughs> that is ridiculous and so cool at the same time oh my gosh only 55 who, yards to go who comes up with this stuff <laughs> there we go that's a good spot. not too bad in that spot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah Five years ago when Alyssa and I were able to enjoy this area, someone offered us a canoe on this lake. And being the overachieving, 
uh, adventurous type, we accepted the offer. So Alyssa and I jumped in the canoe. She was in the front, I was in the back. She grabbed the left paddle, I grabbed the, rack, the back paddle, and away we went, and we were paddling fools. We were making great time across this lake, even though there was quite a bit of wind. And at some point, I just asked Alyssa, where are we going? She's like, I don't know. And I said, then why are we paddling so hard? <laughs> and I think at that point, we realized a couple of things. One, we both are open for an adventure, which is good. And we both are willing to work together and work hard as a team to achieve things. But if you have all of that, but you don't have clear goals, milestones, and checkpoints, you're basically just paddling really fast across a lake. And I think over time, we had to learn to channel our energy and how to focus so that we aren't just wearing each other out or working really hard and then at some point looking back and realizing we don't really know where we're going. I guess we didn't realize at the time that we would be a metaphor for ourselves, but we're very thankful for that opportunity and I think we've proven that we can turn that, that teamwork and that focus into something super productive. What are you doing, Derek? Jump on your leg hey, you don't watch out. what are you doing? He hey. runs right into the shop. Wow. <laughs> he smiled. Well, you guys are cool videos. You guys are close up videos there. Oh, yeah. The pool has felt good every day around three o'clock, just as the shade kind of comes around. Yep. And this, but then again, when the wind was blowing, we were all getting kind of chilly. So, it was bigger than our hot tub. Lots more, yeah. I would say this trip was worth it. It's yeah, I think so departure from our day-to-day -day life at home, but I think the change of pace was good for us. It was a good chance for us to check in on ourselves. And I don't know about you, but kind of miss home a little bit. Always. It's nice to go away so that you can appreciate coming home. Yep. They say sometimes you have to get lost to appreciate being found. So it'll be nice to kind of wrap up here and then head home and get back to the work that we were doing. Yeah, and I think before. there's there's always a reason not to come on trips like this that are far oh, away, yeah. not convenient. And I mean, just yep. we need to get back to working on the house. We have a lot of work we want to do before winter. So we have yep. all the reasons to not come, but I think it's yep. good that we did. This is our first vacation in over three years. So. And it's good. I think we, we yep. vacationed well. We relaxed we went on a bunch of hikes and got a lot of fresh air but at the same yep. time we didn't do too much and yeah we had days where we just didn't really do anything i think we had an agreement at the beginning of this video that work was forbidden and if you were caught working uh there were to be consequences do you think we achieved that i achieved that <laughs> you did did you work uh, no yeah totally, you totally, totally worked, worked. <laughs> so um, i have no guilt well at all. we'll find some punishment for me and I'll take my lashings, but working something I do well. So, you know what? If you're if you're good at it, own it, right? Whatever you're gonna be, be a good be one. Be a good one. <laughs> so what I'm trying to figure out is how to do the cannonball without splashing all the wonderful relaxing people with the book. We have an engineer here who's an expert on uh, how to you know project energy away. So we're gonna we're gonna try his plan. All right. So if I understand the plan correctly, if I go that way and I enter the water with momentum, the splash won't go that way or that way. Is that right? Sure. Take like a running start. Sometimes I feel like I'm just getting wild. What do they call it, a wag? Yeah, wag. I think, I think an engineer recently just introduced me to the wag. All right, here we Don't go. Don't get my hair wet. Get my hair wet. Ah! That was not too bad. Are we gonna get a score? Two? The guy's reading don't look too pissed off, so I don't think you got him. The book people are good, the book people are good, alright. So when we get near uh, Ferris Wheel, really? we'll check with NorCal approach. Ferris Wheel? Uh huh. The little town. Yep. We'll check with NorCal approach. Do you think there's a Ferris Wheel, Sheriff? <laughs> a little hard to take that guy seriously. Open up, it's the Ferris wheel, Sheriff. Okay, well, it's the it's the merry-go-round, Sheriff, and I say no. So 
in case you didn't guess it earlier, we're flying to Chico State. Yes, it was at one time ranked the number one party school. The reason we're going there is because that's where I went to college and it was the furthest away I could get from home without going to Humboldt. Oh. You know what they say about Humboldt. I mean, Humboldt. I just wasn't quite ready for that, so Chico State it was. 